Hello and welcome to GTC for fall of 2022. My name is Andrew Edelston, and today we're going to be talking about real-time neural networks, uh, neural graphics, and also some of the amazing announcements, uh, both on the hardware and the software side, that have happened over the last 12 months and indeed over the last few hours. The first thing we're going to talk about is one of those few hours announcements, a brand new GPU architecture that was announced at the GTC keynote. We're also going to look at an interesting new way of using that chip to enable a new type of neural graphics technology. We'll then move along and look at some other ways that NVIDIA is using real-time neural networks, uh, both in terms of software products and also for research. We then change tack a little. I want to spend some time looking at some interesting uses of content creation tools that uh, take in AI or other types of uh, machine learning algorithms. Toward the end of the session, we'll look a little bit further afield at some of the interesting research that's being done. Uh, this is both uh, timely and also uh, a glimpse into the future. And indeed, that's how we'll end the session. We're going to talk a little about interesting new use cases and areas of research that I think the industry and NVIDIA are going to head down. So to start the session, I just want to go over a little about the NVIDIA Ada Lovelace GPU architecture. Now, our CEO, Jensen Huang, uh, launched this product at the GTC keynote, and he went into a lot more detail that I am going to go into. I encourage you to go and look at that keynote. There's a lot of great information there. The big things uh, for me and the team here researching real-time uh, neural networks and indeed their interplay with uh, real-time graphics is the massive bump in both uh, shader rendering and ray tracing horsepower and also the new uh, fourth generation tensor core which we're making use of and I'll explain that uh, in just a moment. The other very interesting addition for deep learning is that we now have uh, a unit called the Optical Flow Accelerator, and I'll get into what we're using that for in just a moment. So if we think about rendering uh, high quality games, uh, the NVIDIA RTX introduced us to this concept of real-time ray tracing. Uh, when we think of ray tracing, we often think of films, and uh, film, a single frame might take hours or even days uh, due to all the computation required to calculate how all the different photons are flying around a scene. Obviously, when we're rendering something at uh, game frame rates, we don't have that luxury of time. And so with NVIDIA RTX, we uh, brought out the RT core. Uh, Ada has the third generation of that RT core. And this drastically increases the amount of rays that can be cast by the 3D renderer, thus resulting in much higher quality graphics. Uh, in particular, as you'll see in uh, some of the uh, samples, the quality of the lighting, the shadows, and uh, the character uh, interactions with materials and so on are uh, so much greater. However, one problem, as you can see from that number sitting there on the right-hand side of the screen, it takes a lot of horsepower to calculate a scene in full ray tracing detail. Even with an Ada card, uh, you'll see this uh, game Cyberpunk, as we're using here. If we're rendering that natively at 4K resolution and have the ray tracing, the new ray tracing turned on, the frame rate is a bit slow. So that is where we introduced our deep learning Originally brought out with the Turing architecture, DLSS 2 or DLSS Super Resolution uses a convolutional autoencoder and uh, it allows a game to render at a low resolution while still outputting a high resolution 
of a very similar quality to what you would expect with native re rendering. To achieve this, we have a very large data set. <clears throat> this is comprised of uh, low resolution 1080p images and uh, the matching uh, motion vectors and depth information. Then we ask the network to try to generate a 4K or 2160p image. That image is then compared against an ultra high resolution image, uh, 16K. Now that is an image that is even on the latest hardware too slow to render in real time, but we can use it for our, our training and for our reference. And so the network is trained to take a low resolution and produce a high resolution. And this is uh, repeated tens and thousands and millions of times over and over. And the autoencoder auto gets very good at taking in this low resolution and producing a high resolution image. Over time, this has been integrated in over 200 uh, games and different applications, and it's definitely proven its worth. Uh, the quality that we get out of the DLSS super resolution network is very high and it allows for, as you can see on the right hand side, an instant increase in frame rate. However, we wanted to go one step further. So now with ADA, we introduce DLSS 3 and that takes DLSS to the next level.